Good morning or afternoon, financial sages in training. We have a Halloween special this episode. As you can see, I have my custom manor up here. Spooky pumpkins and eyeballs staring at us while we read through this annual report as if there were not enough pressure already. In this special, I pulled up CRISPR Therapeutics. Now, for those not in the know, CRISPR is the gene editing company. They have the exclusive technology to be running gene editing programs. Um, they're set up like labs. They're a Swiss company and uh, definitely registered in the New York Stock Exchange. So all any of us could probably invest pretty easily. I want to kind of focus a little bit on what their experiments are, hoping it fits the spooky vibes of today. As always, we will end this video by consulting with the Sage Seeds AI that will kind of give this a season ranking. Let's dive in so that your wisdom can blossom. The consolidated balance sheet. Eight times more marketable securities than cash and cash equivalents. If you haven't done so yet, please check out the Nike starting guide. On top of being the starting guide to watch these videos and look at 10Ks yourself, it also touches on what is going on when they do something like this. Accounts payable is ticking up. Most of their liabilities are the leases, presumably the labs that they're running. For total assets to total liabilities is almost 18. That's the ratio between them. If you've been watching along these videos, that should stand out as a very, very high ratio. But okay, moving on to the income statement, statement of operations. Money is not the goal of this company. Don't be trying to make a profit here. Statement of cash flows. Depreciation very much chugging forward, becoming actually fairly large, uh, over 24 million as of the latest year. The higher this is, the more experiments CRISPR is managing concurrently. What is uh, going on behind the scenes here, as much as they're willing to reveal at least. Notes to the item eight, CRISPR Therapeutics has been around since Halloween 2013. So this is the 10 year anniversary. Mm. The company was established to translate their technology for gene editing, genome editing technology, into a transformative gene-based medicines for the treatment of serious human diseases. Principal offices are in Switzerland, Massachusetts, and California. They're creating their first cell therapy manufacturing facility in a place called Framingham, Massachusetts. Here they're uh, being very straightforward, as they should be. Um, they're not saying that they don't care about making money, but they're saying that the company will require additional capital to fund its research and development and ongoing operating expenses. When you don't put any effort into making money, then yes, you need to continue to ask investors to keep you alive. It's very much a invest in this because you believe in the application of this decades out. Um, they're trying to change the face of the Planet, basically. The other story though is going to be the item one. First page of the item one, we have established a portfolio of therapeutic programs in a broad range of disease areas across four core franchises, <laughs> hemoglobinopathies, immuno-oncology, regenerative medicine, fountain of youth type stuff, <laughs> and in vivo approaches. These last two are where, um, you know, I'm, I'm exaggerating a bit, but it, it, it's it's spooky. It's spooky. So very, very important, these first two that they're talking about. We break down these words. These are actually amazing that they're even attempting this. Um, we're talking about treating cancers and immune disorders with this immuno-oncology section. And for the first one, we're talking about, in general, um, anything that attacks the blood. Now, that could be most viruses because they all, all viruses, all diseases, pretty much, um, do touch the bloodstream at some point and have to travel through your circulatory system. Medicine is definitely not my background. But hopefully people in the comments can let me know how badly I'm butchering this. <laughs> We're gonna fast forward to the regenerative medicine and in vivo approaches to kind of stick to the spooky theme. The use of stem cells to repair or replace tissues that have been lost, damaged, or aged. They acquired a company in 2022 called Viasite. After this acquisition, they're now able to force strategic collaboration for the discovery, development, and commercialization of gene-edited stem cell therapies for the treatment of diabetes. Amazing. Very amazing. 
Um, they believe the combination of their stem cell capabilities and CRISPR's own gene editing capabilities has the potential to enable a beta cell replacement product candidate that may be delivered durable benefit to patients without requiring immunosuppression. A little bit later down though, that is the commercial application. Here now they're talking about the details of a multi-stage product strategy. They start making reference to experiment IDs. This experiment, VCTX210, has gene edits designed to promote immune evasion and cell fitness. It is in a phase one clinical trial treatment to enhance cell fitness. Now remember, all of this is within a thing called regenerative medicine. Hey, if you're getting more comfortable uncovering the stories behind the numbers, please like and subscribe. On now to the in vivo section. In vivo gen editing strategies focus on gene disruption and whole gene correction. In other words, in vivo means editing the genes, not of stem cells that can be introduced to a body, but in editing the genes of cells that are already part of a live body. In vivo is editing your cells potentially, or ideally anyone who can go to a gene therapy clinic. They have established a leading platform for in vivo gene disruption starting in the liver. We plan to advance the broad portfolio of programs the leading programs in this section target angiopyotene related protein and lipoprotein. Let's look up angiopyotene related protein 3. And I might not even be saying that correctly pronunciation wise. Here we have this uh, protein 3 that we're trying to look for. This paper claims that they are proving that this protein specifically inhibits lipoprotein lipase activity, increasing triglycerides. I know that's related to fat and other lipids that's also related to fat. What is lipoprotein lipase activity? So lipoprotein lipase activity is related to lipoprotein lipase. Another paper here states that it, that is a rate limiting enzyme that hydrolyzes circulating triglyceride rich lipoproteins such as very low density lipoproteins and cliomicrons. As the liver, it's not specifically saying this, but the implication is, is as the liver becomes less efficient in humans that are alive. <laughs> I'll add that right there. Lower quality work is done by the liver. That is what this decreased LPL activity is talking about. It's roughly speaking, one job that the liver does is done poorly, more poorly at least in retrospect. Now this paper is claiming that there are two contrary views to whether this is actually poor or not, or why this is poor. This is a debate about whether this is good or bad. Good or bad very much depends on a lot of specifics of medicine. This one paper, which is a relatively old paper, almost two decades ago it was published, claims that high activity of LPL is anti-atherogenic. In other words, high activity protects from degradation of the cardiovascular system. Not exactly the same thing, but high activity, good. Over time, we find that livers actually have less activity just as a natural state, at least natural in the studies we've been able to do in the last couple of decades. Back to the end of the report, this is now almost 20 years later from when that paper came out, and CRISPR is using a gene editing therapy to target whole gene correction. CRISPR is already at the state where they're looking at research on the liver from a couple decades ago where people roughly stop debating the fact that this one specific protein becomes less common because of aging and that that leads to it being easier to have plaque buildup in the heart. They're now at the point where they're saying, let's tell our genes to not slow down that part of the liver. Do we understand why or is each person not going to be basically unique? I mean, all that stuff, honestly, I'm not sure. I, mean, I think we'd need someone much more specialized than me to, to be able to explain that to us. But this already exists is what I'm getting at to. Now it's only in a application state. They're not even in phase trials yet. But then it's just harder to get approval for trials when you're talking about live gene editing. And I kind of want to invite people to just step back and imagine what happens if you can actually change one specific thing that your liver does and influence it to potentially do that better for longer 
what is the economics of that situation like is where I'm coming from it as a financial analyst. Is this luxury? Do we consider this sort of gene therapy to be a luxury good? How do we support a society where gene therapy is not seen as a luxury? You know, maybe I'm just small-minded or I'm biased somehow and I'd love for you guys to point it out to me. It seems to me that if our genes can become increasingly edited, that changes almost every second of our lives, doesn't it? I mean, we live our lives and we have lived our lives for most of human history, if not all of human history, with this assumption that the genes you have will go through their natural course. These questions 10 years ago would have been the sort of thing discussed by science fiction writers and just college nerd and just college students procrastinating to not study for their exam. Now, those are the main people talking about this 10 years ago. 10 years later, on the 10 year anniversary of CRISPR on Halloween, if you're not at least able to listen to this argument, you're missing something that is already in motion. This is just an application stage for the, the, the live editing. But compare that to what was possible 20 years ago. 20 years ago, we were just discovering that this protein existed and people were debating, what does it do? 20 years later, we're so confident in what it does that we're talking about applying for a, a test to live edit the liver in order to promote this protein. That is an insanely quick progress in my mind, at least. And I'm curious what other people think. What does the world look like in another 20 years? For the first time and maybe not the last time, but it certainly is not going to be common where as I'm as a human looking at this, I'm able to quickly say, yeah, this company is not making money. They're probably never going to make money. Um, I mean that when I say that. Um, that being said, on this channel, we're trying to get everyone to develop an intuition into whether the story behind the numbers is or isn't a value story. Do try to guess whether this is going to be ranked high in value or low in value before we reveal. This should be a good test to see whether your emotions are in check when you're putting on the hat of a financial analyst. Um, you had me basically tell you this company does not care about making money. What's your guess? Please like and subscribe. Get your friends in on this channel as well. I find that it's always better to learn with others. Explaining what you're thinking to others is almost limitlessly possible in this sort of exercise. I would be extra excited if anyone wants to take a shot at revisiting some of the things that I tried to talk about in this channel or even talking more about what they're thinking is going to happen with gene editing. Um, you can get hyper specialized, but also there's a lot of room for imagination in this specific industry, which I do think is a legitimate industry that is in the nascent stages. In the comments below, please discuss this further and then share this video. CRISPR is ranked 229 out of 244 in value for the 2022 season. Now, what I was saying about emotions is this company does not even try to make money. Hopefully you took that to mean this is not value, <laughs> right? Uh, I wasn't lying, basically. Now, what's interesting is that there are about 15 companies ranked lower than a company that outwardly says we don't like to make money. I'm, I'm willing to bet some of these 15 companies below it actually do try to make money. What is the stage CZI I thinking? How is this not dead last? Well, even though they don't try to make money, they do pick up grants. They do pick up collaboration revenue. More importantly, the Sage Seeds AI looks at the entire financial picture. And the entire financial picture, while it very much should be related to are you being paid for something that people value, aka making profit? Sage Seeds AI here is seeing a company that, while it's not really making money, it, you know, all, will randomly make some money, but most of the time it's not even trying to make money. It is managing its finances pretty well beyond that. They're not overspending. They're not having wild swings in their SGNA. Uh, they're growing. They're spending more and more consistently as we did see in that opening move, way back in that opening move. But it's all deliberate, well-paced. And while the AI isn't understanding what gene editing is necessarily, it is understanding that this company is playing it for the long term. They don't make money, but they're also not trying to be stressed out and, and have any threat of uh, dissolution. 
They're fairly safe. They will need to raise more money as they themselves have said multiple places in the annual report. But there are definitely companies out there that are much less disciplined and frankly in a worse spot, even if they're trying to make money.